Greetings to you for this joyful service as we celebrate Easter. The service is being recorded in the chapel at St. John's Episcopal Church in Halifax, Virginia. I'm so glad you can be a part of this experience of worship and celebration. Sunday morning at our 10 o'clock service, we'll be having baptisms. Uh, that will be uh, an occasion for joy, as is this service in which we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our service begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter beginning in the 34th verse. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 118. We'll say together verses 1 and 2, and then jump down a bit to 14 through 24. Psalm 118, 1 through 2, and then verses 14 through 24, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 760 and 761 to 62. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. 
I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading is Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, <clears throat> the 15th chapter, beginning in the 19th verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 19 in verses following. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are, are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since, for since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, and then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now as Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. And the words of my mouth, the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And may this written word that we have heard become for us a living word, touching hearts, changing our lives. Amen. There's a scene from the early 2000s TV series, The West Wing. White House Chief of Staff Leo McGarry is talking to somebody on his staff who's struggling with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And Leo tells his employee a parable that he thinks might help. The, the guy's walking down the street in the story when he falls down a hole and the walls are so steep he can't get out. A psychiatrist passes by and the guy shouts up, hey you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription and throws it down the hole and moves on. Then a priest comes along and the guy shouts, Father, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down the hole, moves on. And then a friend of the guy walks by. He says, hey, Joe, it's me. Can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole and our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. Ah, the friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. Today is about finding the way out. Uh, we need more than a therapist. Sometimes we need that. Uh, we need prayers, but sometimes more than a vague promise of prayers. We need someone to show up on the scene of our lives who can lead us out of our small boxed in existence. We need the hope that comes only from God while jumping down into the hole, drawing close to us. And today that hope gets specific. This is not a vague spiritual sentiment. It's, it's all lived out in a story. It's enacted before us in a vivid way. As we heard, on the first day of the week at early dawn, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, burial spices, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body. They're bewildered. Who wouldn't be? But two angels appear, saying, He is not here. He is risen. Now note, in the story, the women were the first to get the message and the apostles, when the women come breathless with the news, receive the women's word, as Luke tells us, as an idle tale. The Greek word here refers to the ranting of a person plagued by delirium. And maybe they thought they had reason to question the blurted news. We read earlier in Luke how Mary Magdalene had to be helped by Jesus. So beside herself was she. She was the one from whom seven demons had to be cast out. But more than anything, the disciples had trouble believing her because, well, I think because it sounds too good to be true. Maybe they call what they hear an idle tale, not because it's silly, but because it's hard to believe news that good. In the thick of our situation, 
we forget. We who know the story, how it, how it all turns out, the story of the death, the crucifixion, we forget that for the disciples, Jesus was dead, really dead, a humiliating death, no less. The cross meant a torturous death reserved for the worst offenders, revolutionaries against the state, low-class thieves, violent criminals. No more hideous fate could be imagined, and no more final, ugly end could happen. The cross meant Jesus had left them. He wasn't down in the hole with them after all. They thought he had been, and then he died. So his followers lose sight of hope. Ah, but something begins to catch Peter's imagination. Luke tells us uh, Peter got up and he ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He had to come and see for himself the empty tomb, the burial linens cast aside. But first he had to, he had to doubt his doubts. He had to at least entertain the possibility that this is more than an idle tale. Jesus' death now leads him to an astonishing conclusion. Jesus is alive. He's still on the premises. This is not wishful thinking. The women's tale is not a seemingly impossible story, a true story. Jesus himself would come down to the whole of our earthly life, forges a way out. He's able to say, I've been down here before, and I know the way out. The disciples would be changed forever on, on this day. And by the way, only what happened here accounts for the change in them, turning them from discouraged, disillusioned, sad, sack, pathetic followers to people who turn upside down the known world. What happened here promises us something. We don't need, we don't need more principles of human ability, pep talks about human potential, I don't think we really need self-help programs. Maybe they'll help us in some habits we have. But what we need is what we get today, a story about a living God, a God ready to inject new possibilities into the patterns we can't seem to shake free of. Anne Lamott talks about that great word grace, which really means undeserved mercy. Grace, she says, means you're in a different universe from where you had been stuck when you had absolutely no way, no way to get there on your own. What if we knew, knew in our heart, that the power of God that raised Jesus from death was also at work in those places in our lives that seem stuck? What at first seemed like an idle tale, well, for the disciples became a con compelling conviction, and maybe for us too. I think this startling possibility would become more real if we spent more time with this story. Pause this week for prayer. Let these resurrection realities seep into your imagination. Maybe take home the, the scripture insert with these passages and reflect on them. There are possibilities here for us, for our everyday struggles, for our fears, for our regrets. There's something new in the air. We hear a story that tells us God is bigger than the obstacles that hem us in, more powerful than the stale stories we get trapped in. The same old loops, the, the same old uh, verbal loops that go on and on in our heads. Maybe you've seen it on Facebook, a photo of a dog running toward the camera, leaping, excited, his fur swept back by the exuberant motion. And, and the caption says, live like somebody left the gate wide open. Oh, that's a good caption. And that's the story today. The gate's been left open. Even better, the stone closing off that tomb has been moved. Even better, someone who died is brought back to life. Someone we need very much wants to lead us, lead us the way out for our stuckness. I can think of another caption to appear below a photo of us. Live like someone emptied the tomb. Live like God could roll away the stone. Live like you've heard the story that changes everything. Live like Jesus is alive. 
But God, it is no idle tale. It's real. It's gritting, gritty. It's glorious. It's freeing. Today is a perfect day to begin to live deeply in the power of this amazing, true story. Amen. And now, hear these words of blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow on you the riches of his blessing. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.